In this video, I am going to be going over the snowflake option for the spring 2014 uh, midterm exam. I have the question pulled up here, and the first instruction is to create a canvas with a height of 200 pixels and a width of 600 pixels in Adobe Fireworks. You want to maintain the default resolution for web images, which is 72. And the background should be black with the hex color code 000000. The second instruction is to save the document with our last name as the file name. I went ahead and completed both of these steps already because my last video shows you how to create a canvas of a particular size and to save the file. I also, just for my own file keeping, uh, actually gave it a different file name uh, but I want to make sure that, you know, I save the file early so I don't lose anything. Um, the only trick, so to speak, I guess here was that it gives you the height and then the width and the dialog box gives you the width and the height. But hopefully anybody that was uh, paying attention to detail there wouldn't have had a, a problem with that. So, there's my canvas at 100%. As you can see in the bottom in the status bar, my metadata, it is 600 by 200. We can visually see that it's black, but we could have also used the property inspector to confirm that. The next instruction, number three, says to use vector tools to create a composite shape of a snowflake. The snowflake should have a transparent fill and 10 pixel white stroke. Feel free to be creative, but do not get too concerned with making your snowflake look artistic. The snowflake could be as simple as an asterisk. Uh, your finished snowflake should have a width and height of 140 pixels. The snowflake should be placed in the vertical center of the canvas and aligned horizontally with the edge of the canvas. Okay, well we know that a composite shape is a shape that's made of two or more other shapes. So I'll go into my vector shapes and I'll just start creating my snowflake. Again, this doesn't have to be too artistic. That first one is probably a little too wide, um, but I wasn't expecting anything, you know, super artistic for this, anything that just sort of resembled this idea of a snowflake would have been fine. Like I said, this doesn't have to be, you know, a work of art. That's fine for my shapes. Now, this needed to be a composite shape, so I'm going to want to select all of these. I'm going to go up to Modify, Combine Paths, and obviously I am going to pick Union, because if I pick Intersection, I only have that area in the center, uh, you know, where they all overlap. If I pick punch, we've obviously got a, a bigger issue there, so I'm just, just going to hit union. And now I have this composite shape. Now the instructions told us that it should have a transparent fill and that we want a stroke that is 10 pixels and white. So I'm going to go ahead and pick the white, or I could have typed my hex color code in there. And then I'm going to, oops, I accidentally hit the 9 instead of the 0. Okay, now it says that my finished snowflake should have a width of 140 pixels. So I'm going to go ahead and add that in and a height of 140 as well. And then it should be placed in the vertical center of the canvas and aligned on the left edge. So I can use the align panel for this. 
We want to align on the left edge and we want to align in the vertical center. Now I am finished with this step. Step four. On a new layer named My Text, type Happy Cinco de Mayo in a 25 point sans serif font. Use the color code 9966FF. Have your text appear in the shape of an ellipse that is 275 pixels in width and 50 pixels in height. Center the text horizontally and vertically on the canvas. Okay, so I'm going to go to my layers panel. I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to name my new layer my text. I'm going to go ahead and type my text. Now it tells me that I want to use a sans serif font. That's one of my clean, crisp fonts without serifs like we see in Times New Roman. I happen to already be on Arial, which is a sans serif font, so I can go ahead and start typing. It says this should be 25 point font, which it already is. And I was given a hex color code, so I might as well go ahead and change that now. Let's see, it said here 9966FF. Now I want my text to appear in the shape of an ellipse, so I need to go ahead and draw my ellipse. And my ellipse should be 275 pixels by 50 pixels. It doesn't matter what my stroke or fill is because this is all going to be replaced momentarily when I attach this to the path. I'm just going to go up to text, attach to path. And now I see my, my text on the ellipse. I don't need to worry about the fact, you know, I think a lot of people ask this in class, that it doesn't go all the way around the ellipse because I can just select the vector object and see that the ellipse is that particular size, which was the, the point. Of course, now it's the size with the text. But I also wanted to center this horizontally and vertically on the canvas. On a new layer, named My New Layer, use a vector tool to draw an octagon, which is an eight-sided figure, with a width and height of 180 pixels. The octagon should have a solid white fill and a transparent stroke. Align the octagon to the right edge of the canvas horizontally and center the octagon vertically. Copy the snowflake created in step three Use the copy to create a snowflake-shaped hole in the horizontal and vertical center of the octagon, and then hide the layer. So this is probably our most complicated instruction so far. I want to start out by creating this new layer. So I've created the new layer, and I have named it my new layer, so who was instructed to do. And I go ahead and draw an octagon. So for that, I'm going to want to pick the polygon tool. And I'm going to change the number of sides to, well, I was going to change it to eight, but that's already done for me. So I can just draw it. But that's where I would have changed the, the number of sides. So it says that my octagon should have a height and width of 180 pixels. And it should have a solid white fill. And a transparent stroke, which it already has. Should be aligned to the right edge of the canvas. Now you might be wondering at this point whether or not you need to transpose this uh, so that it, um, you know, is so that this edge is, you know, parallel to the edge that's really not necessary. I mean you can certainly do more than you were asked to do but this is this is fine. So I've aligned it to the right edge. I've centered it uh, horizontally. I'm sorry I centered it 
uh, vertically and I lined it to the right edge horizontally. So now I want to copy this snowflake. Because this is a vector tool, all I need to do is go file and Excuse me, I was going to hit, oh, edit and copy, but since I'm, since I'm in the file menu, great time to just save my document again, just so I don't lose it. So I'm going to copy that. I am going to paste it. Now bring my pasted area over here. Now I want to center this horizontally and vertically in the octagon. So I'm going to change my align panel from relative to canvas to relative to object. I'm going to hold down my shift key and I'm going to select both the octagon as well as the snowflake and I'm going to align that. It didn't move that much. It looked like I'd actually gotten pretty close to that when I had placed it there. Okay, so I want a snowflake shaped hole in the octagon so I'm going to go up to modify Canvas, oh sorry, uh, modify, combine paths, and I'm going to pick punch. Oh wow, so this was actually in the wrong order on my layout is what's happened here is that my snowflake looks like was actually underneath the octagon. So let me just go ahead and do an undo here and let's see what's going on. So if I unselect everything, I'm going to go ahead and put my path in the right place on top of the octagon. Now, when I select these and go to modify, combine paths, and punch, I've created that hole. Oh, interestingly, I'm just looking back at the instructions because I was kind of taken aback by that portion, and it does say to make sure I'm doing this on that layer. Uh, so I should have been keeping an eye out for that. Okay, uh, number six. On the My Text layer, use a bitmap tool to draw a star. Oh, sorry, I just realized I forgot something. The end of step five said to hide the My New layer. Let's go ahead and click the eye icon to hide that layer. On the My Text layer, use a bitmap tool to draw a star with a 15 pixel stroke on the right side of the canvas. The star should be blue, 0099FF. Dimensions do not matter as long as it doesn't overlap the text and the entire star fits on the canvas. And then I want to save my changes. So I don't need to worry about how big the star is as long as it has a 15 pixel stroke and I'm using a bitmap tool and that hex color code. So here are my bitmap tools over here on the left. The only two that are actually going to result in some drawing for me are my brush tool and my pencil tool. But the pencil tool does not allow me to modify the stroke. So I need to pick the brush tool and that's how I'm going to be able to use a bitmap tool that has a 15 pixel stroke. I want this to be blue. I'm going to go ahead and place, type in the hex color code I was given. And now I can just draw my star. Now, anything would have been fine. Um, oh, now my star is not appearing. Uh, this is actually a good thing because it's pointing out to me that I'm on the wrong layer. So if you notice, I'm drawing on my new layer, but the instruction told me to draw on the my text layer. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that and make sure that I get down to the my text layer and make sure everything is ready for me to use the... Oh. I realized what I was doing there. I was looking at the property inspector and not my, there we go. So I'm going to just select the layer, but 
not that object. All right, so notice here I just have my text selected. So with that brush tool, I wanted 15 pixel and blue. And now I can finally go ahead and draw my star. You know, it would have been fine to just draw something like this. Or, you know, something like this. Or, I mean, there's so, so many ways that you can do this. Obviously, I'm going to have to undo a few times for that one. Um, there's so many ways that you could have drawn the star. It really doesn't matter. I'm just looking for the 15 pixel width and that hex color code. At this point, I'm going to save my file. And then I'm going to follow the instruction to save my file in the format that's most appropriate for web display. This particular file would be fine as a GIF. Notice we don't have any gradients. We have common colors that are solid, you know, solid areas of color. Uh, so this one, you know, would have been just fine as a GIF. That would be the most appropriate format for this. And then afterwards, I would have imported my GIF file into an HTML page. I'm not going to actually do that in this video because I feel like we've gone over that portion uh, so much, and that's actually not really one of the areas that people have problems with the exam. So I'm going to go ahead and end the video now. And you can certainly look through that instruction uh, page to to see how we uh, got to this point as well.